We always love quoting the Shema as we begin our gathering, so we'll place the verses right up on your screen. We're going to begin with Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 4. And like every week, let's say it with real enthusiasm. Hear, O Israel, Yah our Elohim, Yah is one, Echad. And you shall love Yah, your Elohim, with all your heart and with all your being and with all your might. And then we go to the second Shema found in Torah, which is Deuteronomy chapter 18, beginning with verse 18. Let's say it together. I shall raise up for them a prophet like you out of the midst of their brothers, and I shall put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And it shall be the man who does not listen to my words, which he speaks in my name, I require it of him. And then we go to Ezekiel chapter 36, beginning with verse 25. Let's say it together. And I shall sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols I cleanse you. And I shall give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. And I shall take the heart of stone out of your flesh, and I shall give you a heart of flesh and put my spirit within you. And I shall cause you to walk in my laws and guard my right rulings, and you shall do them. Hallelujah. It's time to pray toward the land of Israel. So I want to invite you to stand up and face in that direction. For me, it's this direction, and we're going to pray and intercede on behalf of the Jewish people in the land, and really worldwide, for their safety and protection, for their well-being, and for their salvation, as well as praying for the nations of the world and our gatherings, wherever they may be, worldwide. Let's pray. Abba, we love you, and we are so blessed and so thankful to have this wonderful opportunity to gather together as your people by way of video and worship you as creator and redeemer. We're facing the land of Israel. We know that your heart is with that land. Your eyes are upon that land continually. And our hearts are with the land and its people. And we are praying on behalf of the Jewish people in the land we are praying that you would minister to them, keep them safe and protected. We ask that you would be a light in the great darkness that they're facing right now, that you would give wisdom and understanding and knowledge and guidance to those who are in leadership positions in the land, that they might know what to do at this time. We're so thankful for the release of many of the hostages, and we continue to pray that all of the hostages will be released and make their way back to their families. We're also praying that you would protect the innocent ones, and we're asking you to move mightily in the land of Israel by your spirit. We're asking you to reveal yourself and your son to the Jewish people, that as they read through the set-apart scriptures, they will see Yeshua and be convicted and call upon that one name by which we all must be saved, the name Yeshua, which means the salvation of Yah. We pray also for all the citizens of the land, and we're asking that many, many, many Jewish people and citizens of the land of Israel would come to know Yeshua as Master and Mashiach of Israel and receive a justification that leads to true obedience to the Torah and all of Scripture. We're also praying for the nations of the world and we're asking you to anoint this ministry and these videos that go out each week. We know that you are gathering up Ephraim from every nation under heaven. And we're thankful that you're using this ministry. Inspire people to push play and watch the videos and be convicted by the Ruach HaKodesh, 
by you through your spirit to call upon the name Yeshua to receive a justification that leads to true obedience to Torah and all of scripture. We're also praying for our gatherings, wherever we may be gathering worldwide, and we're asking you to do in our midst what you can do, the supernatural. We are asking you to lift the fallen, to encourage the downcast, to heal the sick. We are asking you to transform us as we study your word, to heal us and bless us as we pray to you. And we are praying that all that we do and say will bring great esteem to you in the wonderful and powerful name of your son, Yeshua. We pray that you would anoint us as your people to go forth into our spheres of influence and proclaim Yeshua and Teshuvah everywhere we go. And we pray for a tremendous harvest of beings in the nations and the cities where we live. And these things we ask in the wonderful name of Yeshua, your son and our master in Mashiach. Amen and amen. It's time to worship, and I want to share with you a beautiful psalm to prepare your heart for worship. This is Psalms 148. It says, Praise Yah. Praise Yah from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights. Praise Him, all His messengers. Praise Him, all His hosts. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you stars of light. Praise Him, heavens of heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of Yah, for He commanded and they were created and He established them forever and ever. He gave a law and they passed not beyond. Praise Yah from the earth, you great sea creatures and all the depths, fire and hail, snow and clouds, stormy wind that does His word, the mountains and all His hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild beasts and all cattle, creeping creatures and flying birds, sovereigns of the earth and all peoples, rulers and all judges of the earth, both young men and maidens, old men and children. Let them praise the name of Yah, for His name alone is exalted. His splendor is above the earth and heavens. He also lifts up the horn of His people the praise of all his lovingly committed ones, of the children of Israel, a people near to him. Praise Yah.
song to Yah. All the earth sing a new song, for He is coming to judge the world with perfect justice. Let the oceans roar, the mountains sing for joy. Oh, clap your hands and sing a new song. Victory he's won. Deliverance has come to all the world. Sing a new song. Sing a new song. Sing a new song. His love he's made known, his faithfulness he's shown to all his sires. Oh, 
Falling from the mountain water, fresh and cool. Running down the beat, and we know it's true. How pleasant, how good, how beautiful it is. How pleasant, how good, how It's time to pray for one another. And I'm gonna take you over to James chapter five and we're gonna read verse 16. It says this, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another so that you are healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous one accomplishes much. The emphasis I wanna place on this passage is on the phrase, pray for one another. You know, one of the greatest gifts that you can give someone who's going through a trial or a difficult time is the gift of prayer. If you will listen to their concern, if you will listen to their need with a compassionate heart and a listening ear, and then offer up that need to the Father in prayer, it does so much. It does such wonders on behalf of the hurting person, the suffering person, to know that their need is being lifted up to the Creator. And there's great power released in prayer. The Bible says that the fervent prayer of a righteous one avails much. Here it says in this translation, the earnest prayer of a righteous one accomplishes much. And so be one who loves others through prayer. Again, it's a tremendous gift that you would take time and listen to a concern, listen to a need, listen to one who is struggling or suffering, and then pray for that person. So I wanna encourage all of us in our home groups on this Set Apart Shabbat day to take a lot of time and listen with a listening ear and a compassionate heart and then lift up those concerns to the Father, expecting the Father to hear and answer prayer because He will, He's a covenant maker and a covenant keeper. And we give Him all of the praise for all that He's about to do during our prayer time. And as we lift up our brothers and sisters and those who are hurting to the Father, we expect Him to do mighty things. And we thank Him for it in advance in Yeshua's name. Hallelujah.
reaches to the heavens Your faithfulness stretches to the skies Your righteousness is like the highest mountain Your just is like the great The sons of man take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They're satisfied, feasting on the fullness in your house. You give. To encourage you in your giving. I want to take you over to Mark chapter 11 and we're going to pick up with verse 12. Notice what it says. And on the next day, when they had come out from Beit Anya, he was hungry. This is speaking of Yeshua. Yeshua was hungry. And seeing at a distance a fig tree having leaves, he went to see whether he would find any fruit on it. And when he came to it, he found none but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. And Yeshua responding said to it, Let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his taught ones heard it. And so this is a lesson to us. Yeshua is looking for fruit. He's looking for fruit on the tree of our lives. He's looking for fruit in ministry. He's looking for fruit. He wants us to bear much fruit. And when he doesn't find it, then he's displeased. And so when it comes to giving, you should be like Yeshua. You should always be looking for fruit. It doesn't do any good to give resources to a ministry that doesn't bear fruit because you're connected with that ministry. It's always such a joy every week for us to come through these cameras and to show you the fruit that this ministry has borne. As we travel from state to state and from place to place, as we hold open air gatherings in parks under the shade trees and teach the Bible for two hours and then afterward take people into the natural source of living water that's nearby 
and water immersed them and they received the circumcision of Messiah. They received the I want to obey heart and the power to be obedient and they are transformed and never again are they the same. We so enjoy, we rejoice in being able to show you the fruit of this ministry, the fruit that is being born week in and week out. And when you sow into this ministry to support this ministry, if you don't have a local congregation, when you bring your tithe here or when you give offerings to this ministry that's blessing you, you are connecting to a ministry that is bearing much fruit and you are pleasing the master in your giving. And so I just want to rejoice in all that Yah is doing through this ministry. And I want to say what a joy it is to be connected with so many of you. And if you're not connected with a local fellowship or a ministry that's bearing much fruit, now's the time. You don't want Yeshua to find no figs, no fruit on your tree. You want to be connected with a ministry that's doing the work and you want to support it with your prayers and with your giving. And so we just rejoice in all that Yah is doing and we say Yah bless you in your giving. Well, are you ready to get into Yah's Word today? I am as well. I want to invite you to open your Bibles with me to Exodus chapter 20, and we're going to begin with verse 1 in just a moment. And today we're going to be talking about what every believer should know about the Ten Commandments or the Ten Words. What every believer should know. You should be fully aware of these facts. And many who are in religion don't understand how the Ten Commandments relate to them today. We're going to get into all that and more in just a moment. Let's begin with Exodus chapter 20, beginning with verse 1. And Elohim spoke all these words, saying, I am Yah, your Elohim, who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim, out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You have no other mighty ones against my face. You do not make for yourself a carved image, or any likeness of that which is in the heavens above, or which is in the earth beneath, or which is in the waters under the earth. You do not bow down to them, nor serve them. For I, Yah, your Elohim, am a jealous El, visiting the crookedness of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing loving commitment to thousands, to those who love me and guard my commands. You do not bring the name of Yah your Elohim to naught, for Yah does not leave the one unpunished who brings his name to naught, who diminishes his name. Remember the Sabbath day to set it apart. Six days you labor and shall do all your work but the seventh day is a Sabbath of Yah, your Elohim. You do not do any work, you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days Yah made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore, Yah blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart. Respect your father and your mother so that your days are prolonged upon the soil which Yah, your Elohim, is giving you. You do not murder. You do not commit adultery. You do not steal. You do not bear false witness against your neighbor. You do not covet your neighbor's house. You do not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, or whatever belongs to your neighbor. Now, these are the Ten Commandments of Scripture, or the Ten Words. I may refer to them as the Ten Words. And the Ten Words are the Covenant Commandments of the Original Covenant. Yah was marrying 
his people, and he had marriage vows. It's a covenant between two parties, Yah and the people of Yah. He was marrying them, and these are the marriage vows that the people were to take. The people were to have a belief in Yah that produced obedience to the marriage vows, and by extension, the other laws and right rulings of Torah. And if they obeyed, and that's how Yah wants to be loved, through obedience, then they were keeping their side of the marriage. Yah, in turn, would be their Elohim. He would keep His promises. He would hear their prayers. He would fight their battles. He would provide for them. He would heal their sick bodies. He would be their Elohim. And so that is the marriage covenant or the marriage arrangement. Now, let me take you over to Exodus chapter 34, and we'll look at verse 28, the second half of that. Exodus 34, verse 28, it says, And he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the ten words. These are the marriage vows. It says the ten words in this translation. And he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant. The ten words. And so the ten commandments are the marriage vows. Now, they were the marriage vows of the original covenant. And what we're going to see here in a moment is that they are also the marriage vows of the new covenant. Hallelujah. Now, go with me over to Deuteronomy chapter 5. And we're going to look at the heart of Yah as he is marrying his people and he has declared the marriage vows, the words of the covenant, the covenant commandments. What is in Yah's heart? What is he thinking? What is his desire? Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse 29. Oh, that they had such a heart in them to fear me and to guard all my commands always so that it might be well with them and with their children forever. And so it was in Yah's heart that his people would fear him and obey his commandments. In other words, keep their side of the marriage arrangement, keep their side of the covenant because Yah wants to bless them. He wanted to give them life and blessing. It says here, so that it might be well with them and with their children forever. And then go with me over to Deuteronomy chapter 11. And we're going to look at verse 1. It says here, And you shall love Yah your Elohim and guard His charge, even His laws and His right rulings, and His commands always. Now, I don't have time to develop this fully, but if you take time and study it out, you'll see it, that Yah always equates obedience and love. If you love Him, you'll obey Him. Yeshua, quoting the Torah, said, If you love Me, keep My commandments. Well, that's what Yah says. If you love Me, you show me that you love me by obeying me. So this is his heart. He wants to enter into a marriage with his people and their side of the marriage arrangement is to obey him, to obey the 10 words and by extension, all the commandments of Torah. And when they do, then Yah says, I'm going to be your Elohim and I'm going to answer your prayers and I'm going to give you life and I'm going to give you blessing. And then go with me over to Hebrews chapter 8. And we're going to ask the question, did they obey their side of the covenant? Hebrews chapter 8 
beginning with verse 6. Notice what it says here. But now he, speaking of Yeshua, has obtained a more excellent service, inasmuch as he, Yeshua, is also mediator of a better covenant, which was constituted on better promises. And we're going to talk about in just a moment why the, quote, new covenant or renewed covenant is a better covenant and what the better promises are. Verse 7, For if that first covenant or marriage arrangement had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second. This is not talking about the Torah. It's not talking about a body of biblical material. Some people say, well, this passage says that the Torah had fault. And so Yah abolished his Torah. That's not true. That's not what this is talking about at all. It's talking about the original marriage arrangement. For if that first covenant or marriage arrangement had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second. If the first marriage arrangement had not been broken, then there wouldn't be a need for a second marriage arrangement. Look at verse 8. For finding fault with them, not with the Torah, not with Scripture, but finding fault with His people. For finding fault with them, He says, See, the days are coming, says Yah, when I shall conclude with the house of Israel and with the house of Yehudah a renewed covenant. You might say a new covenant. It's renewed in many ways because the same marital vows, the same covenant commandments are in the new covenant as were in the original covenant. It says, When I shall conclude with the house of Israel and with the house of Yehudah, a renewed covenant, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Mitzrayim or Egypt, because they did not continue in my covenant. What does that mean? They broke their marital vows. They didn't obey the ten words. They weren't obedient. They went after false deities. They committed abominations. They didn't obey. It says, because they did not continue in my covenant, and I disregarded them, says Yah. So he wrote the house of Israel, the ten northern tribes, a writ of divorce, and sent them off into the land of Assyria. And they were assimilated into the nations. He sent Yehuda off to Babylon for 70 years. But they broke the covenant with him. So he needed to establish a new covenant. And I have a teaching called What's New About the New Covenant. What's new about the New Covenant is that Yah is going to provide all we need to be able to do what the original people of Elohim did not do, and that was obey. So through belief in Yeshua, it doesn't mean that the Ra is abolished, that the laws of Elohim go away. It means that believers, those who truly believe in Yeshua, are empowered by Yah to do what the original covenant people did not do, and that is obey. Verse 10, Because this is the covenant that I shall make with the house of Israel after those days, says Yah, after the death, burial, and resurrection of Yeshua, giving my laws in their mind. He says, I'm going to put my Torah, I'm going to put my ten words 
I'm going to put the laws and right rulings of Torah in their minds. And they're going to think about how they can love me the way that I want to be loved. And that's through obedience. Now, it doesn't say I'm going to abolish my laws, does it? We're talking about the new covenant here. And Yah says, I'm going to put my laws in their mind and I shall write them on their hearts. So where does Torah go? Does it go in the trash can? Or is it internalized? Is Yah going to do something supernatural so that those who would believe in Yeshua can have all that they need to be able to be obedient? Well, we're going to see it in Scripture. It says, Giving my laws in their mind, and I shall write them on their hearts, and I shall be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. We're going to see in just a moment that Yah did not want another failed marriage. So he's going to do something wonderful, something marvelous, something miraculous. He's going to do a work in the minds and the hearts of believers so that they are empowered unto obedience, to be able to obey the ten words and keep the marital vows, to be successful in the new covenant, and also be able to obey all the laws and right rulings and charges of Scripture. Hallelujah. Now, quickly, go with me over to Jeremiah 31, and we're going to go a little bit further in bearing out what I'm talking about as it relates to the covenant being a marriage arrangement. Jeremiah 31 and we'll start with verse 31. See, the days are coming, declares Yah, when I shall make a renewed covenant, a new covenant, with the house of Israel and with the house of Yehuda, not like the covenant I made with their fathers in the day when I strengthened their hand or took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Mitzrayim. My covenant, which they Broke. They broke the covenant through disobedience. Though I was a husband to them, declares Yah. And that's the point that I want to make with this passage. When we talk about covenant, we're talking about a marriage arrangement. And Yah said, I was married to them. And I gave them their marital vows, the ten words. And they broke covenant with me. And so that's why we have the need for a new covenant, a renewed covenant. But what's definitive about the new covenant is not that there is no law, that there is no Torah, that there are no covenant commandments. What's new about the new covenant is that Yah places His commandments in our minds and writes them on our hearts and gives us everything that we need to be successful in the covenant. In other words, to obey His commands. And we're going to see that as we continue. Now go with me over to Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19. And we're going to begin with verse 16. And I want to show you something really interesting here. We're going to be looking at a teaching of Yeshua's. Matthew chapter 19, beginning with verse 16. It says this, And see, one came and said to him, Good teacher, what good shall I do to have everlasting life? So this is a rich young man coming to Yeshua, and he's asking about everlasting life. Well, this would have been a great opportunity for Yeshua to say, Well, all you have to do is have a mental acknowledgement that I am the Messiah, and you're good. You'll have everlasting life. Is that what Yeshua taught here? 
verse 17, And he said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except one, Elohim. But if you wish to enter into life, in other words, to have everlasting life, guard the commands. Obey the marriage vows. Keep the covenant commandments. He said to him, Which? Which commands? And Yeshua said, You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Respect your father and your mother. Now he's quoting the love people commands of the ten, the ten words. So in the ten words, there are four love Elohim commandments and six love people commandments. And he's quoting many of the love people commandments here. And then just to substantiate the fact that he's talking about loving people, he says, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, all these I have watched over from my youth. What do I still lack? Well, he was lacking the love Elohim commandments. He was loving people. He was loving his neighbor. But he was failing to love Elohim. Look at verse 21. Yeshua said to him, If you wish to be perfect, go, sell what you have, and give to the poor, and you shall have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. So Yeshua is dealing with the fact that this man loved his money and his possessions more than Elohim. So he's telling him, you have to get rid of this false deity that you have. This false deity of mammon, the love of money. Go and sell your possessions and give the money to the poor and come and follow me. And how many of you believe that if this man did that and followed Yeshua, that Yeshua would have led him into obedience concerning the love Elohim commandments? Of course he would have. It says, and when the young man heard the word, he went away sad because he had many possessions. And so he couldn't give up his love for money, sell his possessions, and follow Yeshua in the love Elohim commandments. And then go over to Matthew chapter 5. And we're going to pick up with verse 17. Notice what Yeshua is teaching here. Do not think that I came to destroy or to abolish the Torah or the prophets. Well, that's what many people in religion think. That Yeshua came to abolish the Torah and the prophets. Oh, Yeshua kept the Torah perfectly so we don't have to. Yeshua left a perfect example of obedience and he said, follow me. But really... We don't really follow him in his obedience to Torah. It appears that a person that has that understanding believes that they follow Yeshua into lawlessness. But that's not the example that Yeshua gave. Do not think that I came to destroy the Torah or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to complete. Your translation may say fulfill. What does that word fulfill mean? It means to fill it full, to fill it up. For truly I say to you, till the heaven and the earth pass away. Now, why is he saying this? Because Yah called the heaven and the earth as witnesses to the giving of Torah. And so Yeshua is saying, till the witnesses pass away, heaven and earth. Well, has heaven passed away? No. Has the earth passed away? No. It says one yod, that's the smallest of all of the Hebrew letters in the Hebrew alphabet, or one tittle, those are the little decorations on the Hebrew letters, shall by no means pass from the Torah till all be done or accomplished, till everything written in Torah is accomplished. And that hasn't happened yet. Whoever then breaks one of the least of these commands. What commands? Well, obviously the ten words, but also all of the commands of Torah. 
And in the day that we're living in, not all of the commands of Torah can be kept, but the commands that can be kept should be kept. Whoever then breaks one of the least of these commands and teaches men so, in other words, teaches men to be disobedient, shall be called least in the reign of the heavens. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the reign of the heavens. And so we're talking about Yeshua coming to fill up the law or the Torah. And if you continue to read this wonderful message here throughout the book of Matthew, starting with Matthew 5 and on, you'll see that Yeshua quotes a couple of the ten words. He talks about murder and he expands the definition to not just mean the action of the hand, but the attitude of the heart. If you have hatred for your brother, then in essence you have murdered him. And the same with you shall not commit adultery. It's not just the physical act of adultery. It's lusting in your heart. And so he's filling up the commands. He's not abolishing the commands. He's not lowering the standard. He's actually raising the standard. And as you continue to read through this wonderful message, you see he quotes many of the commands of Torah, those commands that are not in the ten, and he does the same thing there. He fills them up. And so Yeshua never taught that all you have to do is mentally acknowledge that he is the Messiah. He consistently taught that you need to obey Elohim. You need to obey the ten words. You need to obey the commands of Torah. Go with me over to Deuteronomy chapter 10 and we're going to take a look at verse 16. Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 16. Notice what we see here. And you shall circumcise the foreskin of your heart and harden your neck no more. So this is a command for the original covenant people to nurture obedience in their heart, to always be about obedience, circumcising the foreskin of their hearts and not having a stiff neck that resists and rebels and refuses to obey. And I would say this command applies to many who are in religion today, many who are in Christianity. They want the marriage without the marriage vows. They want the blessing without obedience. And so in the original covenant, the original marriage arrangement, we see a charge for the people to be tender toward obedience. Well, we know that they failed at that. They disobeyed. But we see a prophecy over in Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 6. This is a powerful prophecy in Torah that speaks of the new or the renewed covenant that we have in Yeshua when we believe upon Him. It says, And Yah, your Elohim, shall circumcise your heart. Hallelujah! And the heart of your seed, your children, to love Yah, your Elohim, with all your heart and with all your being, so that you might live. Again, Yah always equates love to obedience. And so this is a prophecy that under the new covenant that Yah himself is going to circumcise our hearts. Now he's going to do it through his son, Yeshua, but it's a prophecy that our hearts are going to be circumcised by Yah and when our hearts are circumcised by Yah, it'll be through Yeshua, then we're going to love Him the way He wants to be loved. And that's through obedience. In other words, this is a prophecy that prophesies that we're going to have a work done inside our hearts that's going to empower us to be obedient. In other words, to obey the covenant commands, to obey the ten words, and the commandments of Torah that we can obey in the day that we're living in. 
Go with me over now to Colossians chapter 2, and we're going to pick up with verse 11, and we're going to see the fulfillment of this promise, this prophecy that Yah is going to circumcise the hearts of believers in the new covenant. Colossians chapter 2, starting with verse 11, it says this, In Him, in Yeshua, this is talking about believers in Yeshua. doesn't say, in Him, you can live a lawless life. It doesn't say, in Him, you're free to disobey. It says, in Him, you were also circumcised with a circumcision not made with hands. In other words, the circumcision of the heart so that you'll love Yah and want to be obedient in the putting off of the body of the sins of the flesh. The biblical understanding of sin is that it is the transgression of Torah. And so this circumcision not made with hands, the circumcision of the heart, is going to deal with the evil inclinations that reside in our flesh that drive us to sin. So that dynamic, the evil inclinations warring against our minds and bringing us into slavery to sin, Yah is going to deal with that. It says, in the putting off of the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Messiah. Having been buried with him in immersion, that's where it takes place, in which you also were raised with him through the belief and the working of Elohim, who raised him from the dead. And so the place of water immersion is the place where Messiah circumcises the believer's heart to love Yah, to have a want to be obedient. And we're going to see in just a moment to also receive the power to be obedient. And so the new covenant is not defined by the idea that all you have to do is mentally acknowledge that Yeshua is Messiah or as the Christians would say, that Jesus is the Christ. And that's all. If you do anything else, then you've fallen from grace, and now you're just a law keeper. Well, you know what we say, if you're not a law keeper, what are you? You're a law breaker. No, the new covenant is defined by the fact that when we believe in Yeshua, that Elohim does a work within us. He gives us the want to be obedient and the power to be obedient so that we can be successful in the marriage arrangement and accomplish what the original covenant people failed to do, and that is to be obedient to the covenant commandments and to the commandments that we find in Torah. Hallelujah. After watching this video, you may have been convicted in your heart and you're asking yourself the question, what must I do to be saved? Well, the Bible tells us that there are some things that we must do to be saved. And so I want to give you seven things, according to Scripture, that we must be willing to do to walk the path to salvation. The first thing is we must believe with all of our hearts that Yeshua Messiah is the son of the living Elohim, that he died on the tree for our sins, that he was buried and raised from the dead. And then we must perform teshuvah. The word teshuvah is a Hebrew word that means to turn to the master in obedience. It's not just enough to say, I'm sorry for what I did in the past. I'm sorry for my sins. But instead you leave behind your lifestyle of sin and you embrace the word of Yah and you have a willingness and a desire then to be obedient to the commandments. And then thirdly, you must submit yourself to water immersion. When you're immersed in water, the Bible says that you are buried with Yeshua Messiah and you are raised to walk 
in newness of life. The scripture says that old lifestyle of sin is cut away from your life. And it's the place where the circumcision of Messiah takes place. That's the circumcision of the heart. And you receive the want to heart. In other words, you want to obey. And then that leads us to number four. You also receive the power to be obedient. And how do you do that? You pray to be filled with the set apart spirit of Yah. And so when you're filled with the spirit of Yah or you're immersed in the spirit of Yah, not only are you given the power to be successful within the context of the covenant and to love Yah the way Yah wants to be loved through obedience, but you're also empowered. You're given gifts of the spirit. You're empowered by Yah to be useful for the reign of Elohim and to go out and to receive that harvest of humanity that Yeshua has charged all of his followers to go out and receive. And then we need to read our Bibles regularly and pray continually. The scripture says the word of Yah is like milk for a baby. And so if you're just coming to belief, it's like you're a little infant in your belief and you need to grow. How are you going to grow? You need to eat. And what do you eat? You eat the word. It's like milk for a baby. So eat regularly in the word and pray continually, the scripture says. Isn't it wonderful that you have a relationship with the Father and now you can have an ongoing conversation with the Father? That's a beautiful thing. And then number six, you need to find a local fellowship that you can engage with. If you can't find a local fellowship, then get connected with a ministry that's blessing you and then stay connected. And then number seven, the scripture says, he who endures to the end shall be saved. What that tells us is that salvation is not just a moment. It's not just a prayer, but instead it's a life. And so you have to live this life of walking in the will of the Father, walking in His ways, following after Yeshua and His example of obedience, loving the Word, obeying the commandments, praying, and being filled with the Spirit of Yah, being led by the Spirit of Yah. And if you'll do that throughout your life, the Scripture says when you get to the end of your life, you will be saved. And so I want to encourage you, once you start, don't quit, don't give out, don't give in, don't back up. Continue in this walk, and if you'll do it and not stop, then at the end of your life or when Yeshua returns, you will be saved. And so I want to encourage you, if you are ready to make a commitment to these things, then why don't you send us an email at info at triumphandtruth.global, and we're going to respond right back to you, and we're going to celebrate with you the fact that you have believed upon Yeshua and you're ready to walk in Yeshua's example of obedience, walk in a lifestyle that pleases the master, and we want to encourage you in it. And so send us an email. We want to celebrate with you. If you endure to the end, the scripture says, you will be saved. Hallelujah. It's my sincere desire that this home worship video resource has been a blessing to you. And as we conclude this video, I'd like to speak a blessing over your life. So why don't you stand up where you are? Just lift up your hands and begin to worship as I speak these words of blessing over you. Yah bless you and guard you. Yah make his face shine upon you and show favor to you. Yah lift up his face upon you and give you shalom. In Yeshua's name, amen and amen.